would stand with us as we sing this next song. This is my prayer in the desert when all that's within me feels dry.
Father, we want to worship you this morning. You, the only true one and living God. And Lord, this morning we bring our hearts before you. Lord, we, we know that you see all things. And God, we just desire to bring a pure worship before you. Lord, to see you for who you are, creator, the one who breathes into us the breath of life, our redeemer, our God who saves, the, our God who sanctifies us, who fills us with your spirit that we might be transformed. Lord, this morning we want to bring worship, acknowledging that you alone are God. And Lord, our dependence upon you. Lord, our need for you. Lord, that you alone are worthy. And Father, we just thank you for this time of worship. We thank you, Lord, for all the moving parts, Lord, that that you move upon people to make this uh, time happen. And Lord, we give you the praise for it. We give you the thanks for it. And Lord, uh, this morning our hearts are full. We are entering into a new season, Lord, in the the spring and the summer, and we just rejoice in that. And uh, God, we just thank you for the sun, and we thank you, Father, for all the provisions and the blessings that you give us. We know that they come from your hand. Lord, we just pray for your blessing upon us today. Lord, that as we stand here as, as one congregation, as one people, Lord, redeemed by the blood, we pray that you would just pour upon us your spirit, that we would sense that you're here, that we would sense your anointing, Lord, that you would speak into our hearts and minds, and we will give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, praise the Lord. Children's Church, you guys are dismissed. Thank you, young adults. Amen. Uh, Jeff, I echo your comments that uh, they did a wonderful job. Amen. Amen. They make it look easy, don't they? Just like Brother Gordon. Brother Gordon, for those of you who don't know, is in Spokane ministering today and and uh, they, this is usually the time of the year they go into uh, Montana also, so be praying for them, for God's blessing upon their ministry. Well, today is an exciting day. We are uh, going to enter into, after the message, we're going to have some baptisms. Can you say amen? amen? Can you give God the praise for his work? I am reminded that God says that he is faithful to complete that good work in us that he began and he's at work in each of us, and we're just really thrilled and, and celebrate Jesse and Angie's decision to be baptized, and, and uh, we're really looking forward to that. Amen. I want to welcome you here, especially if you're a guest, and, and our heart and our prayer is that uh, as you leave this place, that you will, you will say that it's been good to be in the house of the Lord, and that uh, as you leave this place, that you have our prayers, that you have heard a word from God, amen, whether it's in a a conversation or whether it's in um, uh, a word that uh, is in a song or whether it's the message, however it is, we pray that, that as you leave this place that you've sensed that God has spoken into your life and we will say amen and thank you, Lord, for that. Praise the Lord. I want to uh, share a few minutes this morning about Moses. Moses. And the power of declaration. Declarations are powerful things, aren't they? You think about the way people use this idea of declaration. You know, when you get married and you stand in front of people, you make a declaration, don't you? That you are covenanting with this person to be your spouse, Lord, for life, a spouse for life before the Lord. And you make that declaration and and it's your heart to to do it publicly, right? And there's power in it. And we want to talk about that. Look at uh, Hebrews 11. It'll be in front of you. Verse 24, by faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God 
than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Amen. By faith, Moses. By faith, Moses. By faith, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So much in this passage uh, that I want to talk about. You know, as we can see, faith changes everything, right? Everything was changed in the life of Moses because he was a man of faith. His identity changed, right? And we'll talk about that. His identity changed. He would not, he did not want to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Rather, he wanted to be identified with the son of Abraham, right? Faith changes everything. Faith changes his identity. Faith changed his value system, right? He valued that which was unseen, the promises of God. He valued the promises of God more than he valued all the treasures of Egypt, right? His values changed. His identity changed. His focus changed. His vision changed. His heart was changed, right? His heart was changed. He did not fear the wrath of the king, right? But he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Faith changes everything about us. Don't let the devil ever tell you differently, right? Faith changes who we are. As we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? He's promised us something. He's promised us the forgiveness of our sins. He's promised us reconciliation with a holy God. Amen? He's, he's promised us that he would fill us with his spirit. Amen? Everything changes when we are people of faith. Who we see uh, ourselves as, our values, our priorities, what we're focused on, everything changes. And I think sometimes the devil wants to tell us just the opposite, that nothing's changed. And yet everything has changed. And by the grace of God, and even though I admit sometimes it's a struggle, we are no longer people of fear, but we're people who are trusting in God. And fear is cast out. The nature of faith, this goes along with Brother Bruce's sharing this morning in his call to faith. Faith is seeing things that are not seen. Faith is seeing things that are hoped for. That's what Moses was about. Moses was about, a, he was about seeing things that the natural eye couldn't see. He was about hoping for things that, that were not yet. And faith, the nature of faith, if you just think about it, faith is trusting God that God is going to deliver on his promises. That's what Moses was about. God had promised Abraham however many hundreds of years prior to Moses, right? All those wonderful promises. It's interesting when you think about the nature of faith, that faith is seeing the unseen, it is laying hold of things hoped for, it is trusting in God to deliver on his promises, but also faith requires humility. You think about Moses and his life and as he was raised in Pharaoh's house, essentially, there was something that was at work in him, right? Do I believe? Do I believe in this God of Abraham? If I do, it means I'm with the slave people, right? And so for him to grapple and grasp and, and struggle with his faith was to be a person of humility, right? If, if, if the God of Abraham is true and I put my faith in him, I'm identifying with this slave people. We have never been slaves. I don't think we can hardly compute it in our mind to be under the thumb of someone else, to be owned like a piece of property, right? History is marked by slavery, 
Uh, we are far from it in, in our day in, in this place. But Moses wasn't. Moses saw it. He saw the real-time consequences of slavery. And for him to step out and put his faith in the, the true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he had to humble himself. I'm with them. Isn't it true today that faith requires a humility on our part, that, that we, have to, we have to humble ourselves before God? And, and to believe that Jesus Christ is a Savior is to believe that I'm a person in need, that I'm a sinner in need of salvation. There is a humility that goes along with faith, and we see it in the life of Abra uh, Moses. The nature of faith is that, that, yes, I recognize my need. If we refuse to see our own need before a holy God, we'll never come to faith because that's what God is saying to us. We'll reject that message. And sometimes faith is, is uh, if I can say it this way, it's an injury to our pride. which is not a bad thing, obviously. Faith jumps into the unknown. Moses didn't know. He didn't know what life, this life held, right? He had confidence about God, that God would bring him out and deliver him, but he didn't know about what this life would hold. If it meant riches or, or poverty, he didn't know. He was stepping out in faith. That's the nature of it. Look at this uh, verse 11, 6. I'll ask Christy if she could pull it up in front of you. Without faith, without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Faith is about trusting God, stepping out into the unknown. It says, by faith... Moses, when he became of age, and literally in the Greek, it means having become great. It's never about age, and yet all your translations refer to as, as age, and yet if you look the word up, it doesn't have to do with age, but it has to do with greatness. And we read also... In Acts 7.22, which if Christy can get that up in front of you, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. Moses, having become great, having become a man of reputation, having become a man of ability, not a, not a child, right? Not someone easily manipulated, not someone that didn't have any other options, right? But when he had become great, he chose, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter by faith. Moses. He did not make his choice from one of ignorance or he was out of options, but he chose Purposefully, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. The word there, refused, is, is usually translated denied. Can you picture it? Moses, by faith, denying what people were saying about him. You are the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He denied it. He said, no, I am not. By faith. By faith. I am not the son of Pharaoh's daughter. In other words, he was verbally contradicting what people were saying about him. He took his stand, he made his choice, and he said, no, I am not. As one person points out that one commentator, that Moses' character was on display, right? Right? As we look and we think about this word refused, that this word refused implies that there was something that was being uh, placed before him. Take it, right? Receive it. Receive the benefits of it. And yet he refused. His character was 
on display and that he was being strongly tempted and yet he drew a line and he said no. You know, you think about the son of Pharaoh's daughter and all that that would, that would mean, right? The wealth of Egypt at his fingertips. Pharaoh's daughter represents something to us, doesn't she? She represents wealth and power and prestige and ease and pleasure and the good life, right? Which, which Amer- Americans, we're all after the good life, right? She represented all of those things that he said no to. Think about it. She took him in. She drew him out of the Nile. She named him Moses, meaning to draw out. She took him in when he was floating on the river, out of options. She named him. She adopted him. She trained him. But what God was saying about him trumped, right? Overruled what man had done to him. Through circumstance of, 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 of world events, if I can say that, if events in Egypt, that the children were being killed, and so in an, an act, a desperate act, but an act of faith, Moses was put on the water that God might redeem him, right? And God did. What, what happened there was a, circ- was a series of events that, that were put together in a way by, by what man had done. And yet Moses was there and he was saying, you know what? I don't care what the world is saying. I don't even care what my adoptive parent is saying. I am the son, a son of Abraham. a descendant, an heir of the promise. Can you sense that struggle that we have today to hear what God is saying about us and embrace that and not listen to what the world is saying, not listen to what circumstances have, what uh, uh, corner circumstances have painted us into, but just to trust that God's word is true, that God is true, that what God is saying about me is true, that I am a son of Abraham, right? Right? an heir of the promises, wealth, increase, to be a blessing and to be blessed, to have descendants as the stars of the uh, the heavens, for protection, for the glory of God within us to be used of God. As one person put it, faith made him to prefer the adoption of the king of kings, unseen. Amen? Amen. He walked away from everything that was at his fingertips. And again, it says here that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, was mighty in words and deeds. Moses chose rather to suffer affliction. Are you there? Have you made that commitment? Have you made that step of faith? to rather suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy all the treasures of Egypt, to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked for the reward. You know, in one thing as we look at the life of Moses and we, we hear this call to be people of faith, right? Right? to be people who see uh, God and not the circumstances that surround them or they are positioned in, we realize that statements are powerful, right? Declarations are powerful. Here's one, Joshua 24, 15. This is one of the more famous ones that we often hear and read about. 
It's, and Joshua challenged Israel and he says, If it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Right? Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua's declaration was impressive then and it's impressive today. Declarations are powerful. Again, marriage vows are, pub- are, are done publicly. We want people to hold us accountable, right? I was thinking even about the declaration of an apology that sometimes is needed. It, it's a humbling of ourselves, isn't it? It's being accountable. It bridges divides and brings reconciliation. And there's purpose in declarations. And I think a big part of them is for us personally that in the days and the years ahead that we will remember, you know what, we chose. Whether it's a vow or whether it's a statement of faith, declarations are powerful because they, in the days ahead, they will, rem- they will remind us that we chose the Lord. Amen? We chose him. I remember when I made that declaration. You heard it, right? We can say that. I love that verse in Hebrews, which is uh, the verse right before we get into chapter 11. And he writes, we are not of those who draw back to perdition or destruction, but we are those who believe to the saving of the soul. I love that. He's saying we are not of those who draw back. We are those who believe to the saving of the soul. And I think that part of that strength is in making declaration. And, of course, they serve purposes for our families also. It's a declaration, right? I'm, I'm with God. I'm with him. Statements, declarations, or choices that change history and eternity. So today I want to challenge you to make your declaration of faith. To never back away from it, but to proclaim it, to live it out. We even declare when we come here and we worship, don't we? We declare that God is God. There is no other. That God delivered me. That God has loved me. That he has redeemed me. That he has saved me. And I will declare that. Look at this verse in Matthew 10, 33. Whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. How important are declarations? Very, very. Jesus is saying, declare, declare that you know me. Proclaim it. Today we are going to witness a declaration of faith in baptism. And of course, the power of baptism is is not in the physical water itself, is it? But it's in the faith that is represented by that act, right? That we identify with the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The power, even even if to go back to the analogy of of, of being married, you know, the power of the marriage is not in the ring, even though we, we cherish our rings, right? We value them. They are precious to us. And yet the power of the The ring is not in the ring itself, but it is in the faith that is represented by it. That's the nature of ordinances. Whether it's the Lord's Supper, where we partake of the bread and the fruit of the vine, or whether it's foot washing, where we partake of this ordinance that the Lord gave us in an act of service and humility, whether it's when we anoint someone up front, right, when they want special prayer for healing, we anoint them. The power is not in the physical act of anointing, but it is in the power of faith. That we believe that God is our healer. That God is the one who heals. That God is the one who has asked us to come before him, right, and ask for prayer. The Bible talks about anointing those that are ill. The prayer of faith will save the sick. 
The Bible talks about the laying on of hands, right? And again, the laying on of hands is a powerful symbol that God is the one who gifts, right? If we look into the laying on of hands in the New Testament, it's about gifting. It's about authority. It's about placement. And that's so uh, right to do in the early church. When Paul was sent out, Paul and Barnabas, what they do? They laid their hands on them. The, the church gave them authority to go and be evangelists, to go and spread the gospel. And, of course, the authority doesn't come from men, but it comes from God. And so the act of laying on of hands, the power within it, is in the power of our faith. That we believe that the Holy Spirit is the one who gifts. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives authority. And so today we, we are privileged and joyed, overjoyed to witness a declaration of faith in baptism. And we are so thankful for that. And we're going to do that now. And uh, I'm going to ask Pastor Kurt and the, the kids, I guess we'll give them a minute to, uh, to come in. I think they maybe we're going to come in also. I didn't see you there. While they're doing that, let me share a thought that, that I've often shared, and that is, is that baptism is a public declaration, right, of faith. It's a public declaration of an inward reality that says that we're with the Lord Jesus Christ, that we believe that his death was an atonement for our sins, that we believe that through his death we are reconciled to a holy God, we, that we believe in his resurrection, that we believe in new life through his spirit, and that we believe we want to follow him. All right, how are we doing? Pretty good? So Jesse and Angie, as soon as that's uh, up, you guys can come forward. We give God praise for Jesse and Angie and your faith 
and your commitment to the Lord to follow him and to uh, be baptized. You know, this is something that the Lord has, has called everyone who believes in him, amen, to be baptized. And uh, we're going to begin with a word of prayer. So if you just bow with me. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the power of your Holy Spirit, the power that, that comes in and fills our lives and causes us, Lord, to see you, the Lord of glory. And God, we just thank you that you love us. We thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your only begotten son to come and dwell among us, to live a perfect life, to die in our place. And Lord, that you raised him from the dead the third day, even according to the scriptures. And Father, we thank you today that you have poured out your spirit into our lives. And God, we just give you the praise because, Lord, we know that no one comes to the Son unless the Father draws them. And so, Father, today we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesse, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son, the only begotten Son of the living God? Yes, I do. Amen. Do you believe that he died for your sins in your place? I do. Good. Do you believe that the Lord resurrected the third day and is sitting at the right hand of the Father? Absolutely. Amen. Do you choose to follow him, put your faith in him? I do. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for Jesse's confession of faith. And Lord, again, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to uh, sing a song, and Venice is going to lead that, and uh, we're going to come down there, and we're going to have special prayer, and so just uh, stay where you're seated. Please join me in singing, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to you, oh my soul, 
rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love to worship you, O my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you So I'm going to invite uh, Brother Jerry and Brother El uh, Leo up here, if they would come up. And we're going to just take a moment of special uh, pr time for special prayer. And any of the family or anyone else that would like to join, you're welcome. I'm going to ask Brother Leo and Brother Jerry to pray. And uh, we're just going to ask that uh, God blesses Jesse and Angie and fills uh, you with his Holy Spirit afresh and anew. And, and I know he has, and I know you're his. And, uh, you know, the Bible talks about those fresh infillings of the Spirit. And we're going to pray for that uh, right now. And, and uh, let me just start, and I'll give the mic to Brother Leo and then uh, Brother Jerry if you'd close. Anyone else want to join us? You're welcome. All right. Let's pray. Father, I just want to begin here this morning, and Lord, we know that you are a God of your word. Lord, you have promised us that he, whosoever, he or she, who believeth on your Son, shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, this morning we acknowledge that already, that in the life of Jesse and Angie, you have filled them with your spirit. You have drawn them to your son. And, Lord, we want to just ask that you would fill them with a fresh infilling. And, Lord, that they would sense that you have supernaturally gifted them for service within the church. Lord, that you have positioned them for such a time as this. Lord, that you have designed them, equipped them, and empowered them for service. And Father, I pray that even right now that you would let them know that they are your children. Lord, your word tells us that your Holy Spirit is the spirit of adoption. It is the spirit of sonship whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. Lord, let them know that you dwell in them through your spirit and that they are yours. And comfort them even now, I pray in Jesus' name. Father, we bow before you with full and grateful hearts. Truly, Lord, this is the reward that comes from heaven, for it's only through your spirit that Jesse and Angie have been drawn and expressed their faith in baptism. And Lord, as we, as we pray, we pray that even now your Holy Spirit would fill our hearts, that they would be drawn to you as a couple, as a family, and as the family of God. We give you honor. We're grateful. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Our Father, which art in heaven, we know this is a special occasion for these two individuals, for Jesse and for Angie. We are so grateful that they chose to serve you and to walk with us as a group here who trust and uh, have devoted our loyalties to you. Lord, when I say personally, I like them from the first time I met them. I like them even better today. So, Lord, may we walk together 
in, in our worship of you and in our tributes to you as we attempt to show other people what the life means, our lives mean, as we worship you and as we look forward to one day joining you in a kingdom experience. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, don't leave yet. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to ask uh, Jesse and Angie in just a minute here to go in the back, and then I'm going to dismiss you. And uh, as you leave the church and, and go out to celebrate uh, natural birthdays, celebrate Angie and Jesse and, uh, and welcome them into the family of God.